One item that seems to be increasing concern to the general public is the use of something called rare earth elements, or sometimes rare earth metals. These can be in devices like mobile phones to make them vibrate, or for the colour of their screens. Alternatively, they can be used in some things like wind turbines, banknotes, optical fibres, catalytic converters, magnets and lasers. What are these strange elements, and should be concerned about their usage in everyday high technology items? Well, the first thing to say about rare earth elements is that despite the name, the vast majority of rare earth elements are not rare. This means that we're not generally wasting precious, scarce materials in these devices. The rare in rare earth instead refers to the fact these elements are rarely found in a pure form or in concentrations that are economically viable to extract. And when these concentrations do occur, many of the rare earth elements are found together. This is because most of the rare earth elements have a similar chemical property and therefore are found in similar types of rock formation. Now in the standard periodic table balance, there are parts of the table which are represented in horizontal bands where each element is increasing in atomic number by one. And one of these bands starts with lanthium, the atomic number of 57, and goes all the way through to lutetium, the atomic number of 71. These lanthanides, together with scandium and yttrium, make up the rare earth elements. Now, the problem with extracting these elements from the rock they are actually highly reactive elements and will readily bond with other elements. So purifying and separating these chemicals can be a fairly complex and expensive process. This combined with the fact that there are few places in the world where they occur in large enough densities to make extraction economically viable means that most of the current extraction takes place in China. Now, this is because China has the largest ore deposits of these elements can then extract on a grand scale with minimal regulation. Those elements can then be processed near the sites of extraction and used immediately in the mass production of the parts of high-tech equipment. Now China produces over 100,000 tonnes of rare earth elements per year and has enough reserves to keep this production rate up for about 500 years. Additionally, smaller amounts are or were being produced in Australia, USA and Russia, with Brazil having the second largest deposits of rare earth minerals behind China, but these are not yet being exploited. And part of the reason for this lack of widespread exploitation is that initially when rare earth elements started to be used in a major way for new electronic devices, the price rose dramatically. This eventually led to a dramatic increase in production to match the demand. But like most things in the case of supply and demand, the supply then outstripped the demand and the price of many of these rare earth elements then started to fall. Then some of the mines outside of China closing became uneconomic to operate. Now one problem for new rare earth suppliers is because these elements are difficult to purify, it takes considerable time and expense to set up the required facilities and at the end there's little certainty over the price they may be able to sell the product for, especially against a dominant supplier like China. Now, the other really serious problem comes down to the other elements that are in the rocks alongside the rare earth elements. These are likely to include radioactive elements such as thorium and uranium. The process of separating these elements out will leave behind some toxic and highly carcinogenic compounds. But despite being difficult to extract, Rare earth elements are likely to continue to be important in a high-tech lives, despite being neither rare or indeed earths.